Yes, director of the school district of the city of New York, describe your plan and what standards you would advocate for setting to help ensure the district is successfully preparing students for college and careers, setting evaluation standards for teachers and principals. Well, uh, no easy answer, obviously. Um, first, I'd like to say I'm definitely against uh, a lot of the standardized uh, testing. As Mr. Miller was saying, every student has unique needs, and I think we definitely move towards a situation where we're not only evaluating whether a teacher gets a student going to the next grade, but what quality of education is that child getting? We have national statistics which don't vary that much from our city schools here of students graduating that literally are functionally illiterate. Somewhere along the line, somebody didn't do a job right. Um, and that's, you know, who, <laughs> who do you blame? Uh, you blame the parents, you blame the students, uh, you blame the teachers, but the reality is the results are still the same. And I think we need to move towards a more localized uh, to the school district evaluation program where not only are those teachers being evaluated themselves in their job perform performance, but we need to evaluate the end result. Are the kids getting educated? That seems to be uh, something that's highly ignored. We look at test scores, but we don't look whether that kid can walk away and function in society. Um, I mean, that's going to be subjective. There's, there's no black and white test for that. Um, you're going to have to develop a plan. We're going to have to develop a plan uh, where literally, you know, maybe uh, self-imposed standards, let teachers evaluate teachers. Um, you know, if, you know, <laughs> if you're going to have uh, positive results, you've got to involve the teachers. Right now, it seems to me that all this push and test scores is making a system of the government versus the teacher. And it's the students that are losing out. We need to get the teachers back involved with teaching their students. They need to have their hands untied from this no child left behind to be able to do that. Uh, one size does not fit all. And any approach we take is it's got to highly involve the teachers themselves uh, as far as developing what standards and what evaluations we use to determine whether a job is successfully being done. And the number one litmus in that test has got to be the quality of education that the child has received. Can they function with what they've learned? Thank you, Mr. Moser. Mr. Moser, as the director of the school district of the city of York, what action would you take to ensure the district's adjusted budget is being managed in such a way that the remaining students are receiving a quality education with all the resources and facilities required to create a conducive learning environment? Well, um, I think before I can answer that question, I need to address the, uh, the charter schools in general. I'm all for them. I'm 100% for them. This question seems to be a little bit directed towards the highest priority being retaining the, the current public education system as it stands. I don't see that as the highest priority. The highest priority is the students and their education. If that could be met, by charter schools, that can be met by public schools, that can be met by homeschooling. Whatever works best for that child is what that child needs to have available to them. It's not about the teachers, it's not about the school district, it's about our children. Uh, that being said, I practice what I preach. My own daughter, I live here in New York City, obviously, uh, she's cyber school. I took the direction that it was best suited for her. Uh, right now, she's studying foreign language, uh, she's in advanced classes. I don't think any of that would be available to her in the public education system. Now, as far as operating on a reduced budget, uh, there's no way to predict an accurate answer until we know how much of an impact there would be. Um, if there's enough to stay afloat, then you make the best with what you have. Uh, you can find ways to improve and you find ways to compete. Uh, and, and, and compete with these other options and giving this show the best education possible. If this viability isn't an option without additional influxes of, of tax dollars beyond what is, is, is reasonably explainable, then we got to start looking at other options, combining with other school districts. We got to look at fully, you know, chartering the school district. Um, but there, there's no one answer to be given in advance until we know what kind of impact this proposed, not even definite, you know, legislation would bring about. Um, overall, I'm very open to the charter schools. I'm very open to uh, free markets. I'm very open to competition. 
most importantly, whatever decision I'll be making in a school board director position, my first and foremost emphasis will be on the education of the children and what suits them best. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Moser. As a member of the school board of the city of York, brought out of the box ideals will you present to help improve the effectiveness and efficiency of intergovernmental relations with the city and county to help promote a positive and healthy image of the school district? I know this isn't going to be a popular one to some, but quite honestly, sure, the possibility of call sharing endeavors, really, we have really little to no place interacting with city government or county government. Uh, the York City School Board is its own entity. Uh, it has the ability to, to tax for its, its own purposes directly for a reason. It's not meant to be dependent on you know, city politics. It's not meant to be dependent on county politics. Uh, it, it's meant to stand alone. Uh, as far as outside the box aspects of the question, definitely. we got to start looking other directions. Uh, I think we can actually take lead from the charter schools on this one. New Hope uh, has recently gone quite outside the box with uh, participating with the, the Strand and providing an opportunity for an expanded arts program where students can get real world experience on stage and pursue their, their, their drama arts goals. Uh, we, need, we need to partner with the businesses, both in the city and the county. Uh, we need to get the community involved. Uh, the taxpayer is drained. <laughs> the taxpayer is drained in this city. Uh, we can't give any more in that respect. We need to start looking at other options. Uh, we need to look at mutually beneficial options. You can't force people to, to take our problems on their shoulders, but we can entice them. Uh, there's always a possibility of, of finding, you know, private business partnerships with our sports programs uh, that might provide for additional funding for fields. Somebody wants to put a name on a field, I'm all for it. Somebody wants to put their billboard on, on the back of, of the ball diamond and that pays for our uniforms that year and it gives those, those kids a chance, I'm all for it. Uh, likewise, I, that's a tip of the iceberg and an easily comprehensible example, but the means are out there for us to partner with private business and, and stand on our own two feet in mutually beneficial relationships. Not trying to throw, either throw ourselves at, at city government, throw ourselves at county government. Honestly, we, <laughs> we really should be moving in the long term towards minimalizing our dependency on federal government funds. Uh, those leashes is what gets us stuck in situations like No Child Behind. We need to start going even further outside that box. Um, I'm open to all opportunities in, in that direction. Um, really, it's, it's all comes down to the benefit to our, of our students. Otherwise, we are behooved to masters other than our children. And those strings should not even be tied to us. Thank you. I know you are endorsing the charter schools, but are you aware, or have you done your homework, that our charter schools are failing? They're failing. So is the city schools. No, no. City schools have made a great progress. Do your homework. Do your homework. I am not specifically in support of the charter schools and that I back them over anything else. I am in support of having options. Ultimately, it's up to each parent to have the most options available to them in pursuing the best education possible for their children. If you have five different options and three of them aren't doing good, you still got two to do. But if all we have is York City Schools, and if we, those York City Schools keep limiting the competition in the field, then you don't have as many options available to students, they have less possibilities. That's and all I'm thinking about. I'm looking out for my seniors here. Charter schools is killing us with taxes. That's another part of it, too. Charter schools is the reason that your city school district is in the shape we're in. That's another part of it, too. Mm -hmm. Each yeah. 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 That charter, we pay charter schools a great deal of money to send our kids to them, but they aren't doing anything for our kids. Charter schools are private businesses. They're making money off of your kids. They're making money off of your kids. That's all they are. They aren't doing any better. They were not as bad as you but they were smart. Okay. If these schools were not an honest option, why are parents sending their children there? <laughs> they were full of wages. Some of them are. And they can withdraw them at any time. Especially Lincoln. Lincoln came here and sold 
yeah. the public. Yeah. The kids are gonna get computers, they're gonna get this, this, and this. They don't have none of that. Do your homework. Hey, Ma'am, do they not have the option to withdraw their, their children from their school? Do your homework. I have. I have, but you're, you're illustrating people being victimized when, in fact, they're being given options. If they choose an option they're not happy with, I, as an individual, I, as a taxpayer, or I, as a school board director for York City Schools, cannot be responsible for their decisions. If they do not want to undo their decisions, even though they have the opportunity to do so, that again is their choice. My only concern is children have as many options available to them so as to be able to pursue the best ones for that child. It's up to the parents to make those decisions. If they're making poor decisions, this, I cannot you know, undo what they decide. They can, but they're not. So obviously there's something more to it than what's being presented this time. Okay. I have a question. 